Welcome to this online lesson on the Doomsday Book. We'll be considering what the significance of the Doomsday Book was. The aims are to identify features of the Doomsday Book, to describe the significance of the Doomsday Book, and to evaluate the main significance of the Doomsday Book. This is without doubt one of the most important documents in all of English history, and one of the most vital sources that we have for understanding society at this time. No sort of survey in this amount of detail had ever been conducted before, and its scale still amazes us to this day. Virtually every settlement in England is included in the Doomsday Book, if it existed at this time, right the way down to the smallest hamlets. And so, as a snapshot of England at this time, and indeed at the time of the reign of King Edward, it is an incredibly valuable source. Firstly, some context on the Doomsday Book. At Christmas in 1085, following discussions with his advisers and fearing an invasion by the Danes, William ordered a survey of England. Men were sent to investigate the land holdings of each shire, who held what land, and indeed who held it in the time of King Edward, what taxes they owed to the king, and whether they could pay any more. When the results of this survey were written up, the result was the Doomsday Book. Well, why such a dramatic name? Well, Doomsday comes from the Old English word dom, meaning judgment. This reflects the feelings of the Anglo-Saxons, as they had commissioners coming into their towns and asking them how much tax they were paying, who lived there, how many animals they had, and other searching and quite personal questions about their community that made them feel threatened. Ultimately, they felt it was like Judgment Day when these people arrived. Here's a source from the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle for 1085 describing the way that the Doomsday Book data was collected. The king sent his men over all England into every shire and had them find out how many hundred hides there were in the shire or what land and cattle the king himself had in the country or what dues he ought to have in 12 months from the shire. Also, he had a record made of how much everybody had, who was occupying land in England, in land or cattle, and how much money it was worth. Now, this gives us a few hints as to how wealth was measured at this time. Yes, taxation was collected, and that was recorded in the Doomsday Book, as we will see. But actually, so much about wealth didn't actually relate to cash value. Your tasks then. Choose a quote from the source. What does this tell you about the sort of information that William was collecting? Secondly, Doomsday means the Day of Judgment. Is this a clue to, as to the reaction of the Saxon people to the survey? Pause the video now and have a go at that task. Okay, well, I wonder what quote you chose. One that I might uh, record is this one. Also, he had a record made of how much everybody had who was occupying land in England in land or cattle. This shows us that land and livestock and animals are some of the main measures of wealth, not just taxation and the amount of money that's being, uh, that's being made. The number of names that are listed in here is remarkable too. Fairly obviously, ordinary peasants' names weren't recorded, although the number of them was. But it tells us just how many Saxons lost out during the Norman takeover of land. Typically, you will see a Saxon name as having held the land in the time of King Edward, and then they're replaced almost always by a Norman name. What we're going to do is we're going to create a mind map of the significance of the Doomsday Book, which has got three main components. There's a legal significance. This is anything to do with the law, and in particular, who owned what. Then there's the military aspect. This is the, uh, the issue of looking at the resources that were available in the country and whether or not w uh, William's armies would be able to resist an invasion by the Danes. Incidentally, that invasion never came, but William wasn't to know that. And lastly, the financial implications. Basically, could William squeeze any more money out of taxation from his people? Create your, your basic mind map like this one here. You might want to colour code your factors instead. It's up to you. So press pause while you can prepare your mind map, and then press play when you're ready to see the information. OK, let's have a look at the first category. Our first category is the legal significance. What you need to do is you need to add notes to your mind map and include, as a minimum, three detailed examples per section. You could illustrate certain features to make them more mem memorable. You can pause this video at any time if you just want to record the information. The Doomsday Book includes many cases of Anglo-Saxons claiming land of theirs that had been taken from them. The Doomsday surveys were made as fairly as possible, with all the key people in each hundred having a chance to say who really owned what. The Doomsday Book therefore had a role in sorting out legal disputes over land, very important for William's claim to be just and fair.
So ultimately, this is saying who really does, does own this land, and it was done by mutual agreement. So if one person in the community was claiming much more land than he really owed, the rest of the community would make sure that the truth came out. Pause the video while you take the notes that are necessary for your mind map. OK, let's move on to the next section. Same tasks again, but this time the military significance. The council that William held about the Doomsday Book was primarily called to discuss ways to counter a new Viking invasion threat in 1085. Although problems in Denmark meant that the invasion never happened, William took the threat extremely seriously, bringing thousands of soldiers over from Normandy and housing them with landholders all over England. Although the Doomsday Book does not record night service, it may have been connected to this preparation, seeing how many extra soldiers each tenant and chief could provide. Consider this, a medieval army of this time might have been five or even eight thousand men. A large town of this time would have only been about a thousand people at most. So imagine the effect of all those men arriving in a community at once. How would they be fed? Where would they stay? Well, these are all things that the, uh, the king needed to know and to work out. Not only that, it's worth knowing that there are two Doomsday books. There's Great Doomsday, which is pictured, and Lesser Doomsday, which is much smaller in size but far more detailed. That only covers a couple of counties in East Anglia, which were considered the most at risk of Viking invasion because they were so close to Denmark. These were taken in far more detail, and by detail I mean right down to the last chicken. You can read this one and see how many individual goats, cows, horses, chickens, pigs, and everything there is there, because of course that's a survey of the food available for soldiers. Pause the video again and record your notes about the military significance of Doomsday. Let's move on to the last section. Financial significance. Many of William's tenants and chief enjoyed special deals that meant that they didn't have to pay geld tax on some of their land. It is possible that William had a plan to reverse some of these privileges as a way of extracting more money from his tenants. The tenants, remember, include things like the tenants and chief and the knights. There were heavy geld taxes in 1084 and in 1086. The way Doomsday Book is organised, with the holdings of each tenant and chief itemised by Shire, makes it an excellent at-a-glance guide for working out what the financial opportunities were, and this is exactly how it was used. Pause the video again and make any notes that are necessary. It's also worth bearing in mind that it was Christmas of 1085 when William made this decision, and it was all done within a year. Considering this is a time at uh, which everything needed to be handwritten and people actually needed to physically go out and communicate with people face to face in order to gather the information, this is an incredible feat to achieve this in such a short time and shows some of the urgency that William felt over this. We're going to have a look at an example now from the Doomsday Book. I could have chosen anywhere, but I've just decided to choose my hometown of Great Torrington in North Devon. You probably can't read medieval Latin. Well, nor can I really, but what I have done is I've taught myself how to read the Doomsday Book, which is largely written in the same format using similar uh, abbreviations of Latin. And once you get your head around this, you can actually learn it pretty easily. I'm not just saying this because I'm a massive history nerd, I'm actually saying this because it's true. I learned how to do this in about an hour and a half one morning in half turn. Here's how it works. It always starts by looking at who owns what. So at the top it says Ipsa O10, which is an abbreviation for the same Odo, in this case Odo of Gamelan, holds, and then the name of the town, Torrington, or Torritone as it's written here. The names are always picked out with some red highlighting. That's not a strike through for a mistake, that is actually highlighting. However, it is quite amusing to see that there are some mistakes in the Doomsday Book, which they do try and correct as best they can. Then it tells us who held it in the reign of King Edward. Brictric, who was a Saxon, held it, TRE, Tempus Regnus Edwardus, in the reign of King Edward, paying a geld for three hides and a half. So that gave, a, gave us an idea of the taxable land value at the time. So now we've established who used to own Torrington and who holds it now, we've got an idea of land ownership. So let's go on to what's actually in the town. Now it looks at lands. There's an abbreviation for terum there, or land. Of terra there are, or of lands there are, 40 ploughlands. Now what's meant by that? Well a ploughland or carucate is a measurement of land. It's roughly the area of land that could be ploughed by one plough team in a day. So not a precise measurement, but an idea of the size of a farming settlement. Held by the manor, there were three ploughlands. 
Sorry, four ploughlands. I'll read it right in a moment. Uh, that meant that the manor itself had four ploughlands set aside for it, which the villagers owed um, kind of lord service on, and they had to work on those lands before they worked on their own. There are, now we go on to the people, there are seven serfs or slaves. There are 45 villains or villagers, and there are 10 smallholders. It's unlikely that there were this few people there. It's more that there were seven uh, kind of slave or serf um, households and 45 households of villains and 10 households of smallholders. And they have between them 26 ploughed lands shared. So this is actually quite a decent sized settlement for 1086. Then it goes on to the type of landscape. There are 20 acres of meadow. So this would be useful for uh, uh, using for your animals. 300 acres of woodlands. And there is pasture that is two leagues long and one league wide. It also notes down other important resources in the area. For example, if there was a mill there. Well, at Torrington at this time, there wasn't a mill. Otherwise, it would be on, in, on here. However, it was a centre for, for bacon production by the looks of things. It lists 25 porcari, in other words, swine herds. And they are rendering or raising every year 110 pigs. Hardly surprising, pigs at this time used to forage in the woods and eat acorns and the like, and so having 300 acres of woodland is a good place to have 110 pigs. But how precise is that? It's not abbreviated to 100 pigs, they've counted them, there's 110. And now we get on to the big thing for William, taxation. The settlement was valued at £24, in other words £24 in tax could be gained every single year. Now it is valued at £20. So the value of the, the town has actually declined somewhat since the time of King Edward. The reasons for this are unknown. Perhaps another settlement nearby maybe got more important or maybe there was some sort of other economic strife. Often a very dramatic decline in the value of the land shows that the area had been harried or, or completely razed to the ground by William's troops in the rebellions after 1066. Torrington didn't suffer this fate, but clearly it had suffered a little bit economically. And it would end there but for one last final little clue as to how things were going. There are also lands held by three Frenchmen, equal to three Vergates. These are valued at 45 shillings. So here we've got evidence that there were three French immigrants who have come over. These immigrants probably were richer people who therefore got land of their own and became free farmers on that land. One can only suppose what the reaction of the local people of Torrington was to these newcomers probably taking some Saxon land. What I've hoped to communicate on this screen is the idea of just the richness and detail of the information within the Doomsday Book. And that's one reasonably insignificant town in the whole of England. And every town that existed at that time and every village is listed in similar detail. So the idea of the snapshot of, a, of English life at this time that you can get from Doomsday is absolutely incredible. And it's really uh, fortunate that we have this resource to draw on. But what was its significance to William? Well, we can explain that by using this exam question here. This is asking us to explain the financial significance of the Doomsday Book, although we could change that for any of the other topics. We could say the military significance or indeed the legal significance. You may use the following in your answer. Gale taxes in 1084 and 86, remember that these were particularly heavy, and raising more money. You must also use information of your own. So if we've been given those two examples, you will need to include another of your own. So you must write the, the, uh, a minimum of three peel paragraphs, this means point, example, explain and link paragraphs that explain the financial importance of a doomsday book. How you choose to do this is up to you, but I'm going to provide a writing frame as a hint. Make a point about the doomsday book and why it was important for taxes and raising more money. So you can choose your own third example after you've done it for the other two. Then give an example, then explain, and then link it back to the question. And that link is crucial. You've got to remember that you've got to do the links in order to get those AO2 marks for explanation and analysis. So there are six marks for your knowledge, six marks for analysis, and that makes you 12. How long should you spend? Well, between about 15 and 18 minutes. No longer than 20 unless you're entitled to extra time. So pause the video here and have a go. Oh, but before you do, don't forget to write a conclusion as well. You will need to give which is the most important aspect of the Doomsday Book. So choose from your free examples and say why it was useful to William and what makes that significant to the to uh, uh, makes that a significant aspect of the Doomsday Book. All right. Without further ado, pause the video now. Give yourself some time to write the question, and then we'll have a look at an example.
OK, before we have a look at the example answer, it's worth bearing in mind that this question does have the specific focus of financial significance. So your examples will need to reflect that. It's really worth bearing this in mind because when you read these questions, you need to get your focus right. Because if you don't, you don't pick up those AO1 marks. Here's the example answer. I've colour coded the point, example, explain and link. The particular importance is the link in purple. These link it back to the idea of financial significance and keep it focused on the question. So pay particular attention to those. Also, the text will be quite small. So you might want to watch this full screen and in high definition. One financial significance of the Doomsday Book was taxation. The Doomsday Book included detail of how much tax was paid by each settlement and how much it had paid in the past. This meant that William could easily look for financial opportunities by reviewing the taxation paid by the land held by each of his tenants in chief. This was a financial significance of the Doomsday Book as it allowed William to increase levels of taxation not only to make him more wealthy, but to prepare the country for the expected Danish invasion. Another financial significance were the Gell taxes of 1084 and 86. These taxes were particularly heavy ones. William wanted to use this taxation to fund his efforts to bring soldiers to England from Normandy to prepare for a Danish invasion. This was financially significant as while taxes were not popular, William could manage the money he got and maximise his revenue by reviewing how much tax could reasonably have been gathered from each part of the country. All right, notice so far that I've used both of the stimulus points, the Geld taxes of 1084 and 86, and also the uh, raising of additional revenue. Let's see what I give as my third one. A third financial significance was the settling of land disputes. The Doomsday Book showed who legally held what land in England. This didn't just settle legal disputes, but it also showed who owed what in terms of tax and gave an idea of the wealth of each region in terms of land, livestock and industry such as mill, mills. This was financially significant as William could judge how prosperous each one wa area was and whether their wealth meant that they owed more to the crown. All right, notice here with the link that I've turned the legal aspect of the Doomsday Book into a financial one, which is perfectly acceptable. Overall, the main financial significance was ta taxation. William used the Doomsday Survey to assess taxation levels and decide if he could gain more from taxation. This is shown in, in the subsequently heavy Geld tax of 1086. This was financially significant as not only did it raise more money, but this was by far the most detailed idea of the country's wealth that any English king had ever gained. And it was also a sign of William's strong grip over England. You might want to pause the video here and make some improvements to your own answer if it lacked some of the detail and make sure you've got those links back to the question in there so you can secure both of those AO1 and AO2 marks for your knowledge and your explanation. When you're ready, press play and we'll move on. Lastly then, a quick knowledge checklist. When was Doomsday compiled? Describe the types of information contained in Doomsday. Spend about a minute doing this. Explain one way that the Doomsday Book was useful to William. Again, spend about a, w a minute doing this. Then give one military aspect of the Doomsday Book and give that 20 seconds. Finally, sum up the importance of Doomsday in just three words and spend about 10 seconds on this. So you need to spend a few moments on this uh, altogether. Pause the video now while you complete that and then we'll consider some answers. OK, so when was Doomsday Book compiled? It was in 1086. What sort of information was contained? Well, it was who owned the land and who used to own the land, how big the area was in terms of ploughlands, how many people lived there, what the, uh, the value of the taxation was and what the value of the taxation used to be and other important industries. So what, how was it useful to William? It allowed William to increase his taxes and work out who, who owed what. A military aspect of Doomsday was that it allowed William to see what his resources were and pay for soldiers and work out how the soldiers could be supplied should a Danish invasion occur. What about the significance of the Doomsday Word book? Well, I'll leave that, those three words up to you, but there are plenty that you could choose from, as this really is one of the most important documents in English history. And on that note, that's the end of this lesson on the Doomsday Book. You can investigate your own towns and settlements on Doomsday Online because the whole thing has been turned into a, an English translation that is very easily searchable. So go and check it out if you want to find out anything about where you live and whether it appears in Doomsday. Chances are it will do. And on that note, I'll say thank you for watching, like the video and subscribe to the channel if you found that useful and goodbye.